Hello and welcome to the second leg of the GC32 Racing Tour for 2015. We've come to Cows in the Isle of Wight for what should be some very tricky and different racing for the foiling catamarans. Before we take a look ahead at what the teams can expect from racing out on the Solent, let's first have a little reminder of what happened in Austria at the opening leg. Well, despite just a few days training in the boat, the crew on board Sultanate of Amman handled light winds at Lake Traunsee with ease. They took the inaugural bullet to Austria Cup and an early lead in the series. But can they keep the upper hand in cows and will they be able to perform equally well in the windy conditions of the Solent? It's going to be really tough. We're, we're definitely uh, in these stronger conditions. We're the least experienced team, for sure. Um, you know, so that's going to be a big challenge for us. But you know, we're going to enjoy the sailing, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, have a great result. There were few people who were surprised with Amman's good performance in Austria. In a tour where the crew members are highly professional, experienced sailors, any small detail can make the difference. And on board Sultanate of Amman, the key to success is quite simply teamwork. The crew members have a lot of experience and expertise from different campaigns. And with old friendships being renewed on board, they fitted and worked well racing the GC32 for the first time in Austria. Mainsail trimmer on Sultanate of Oman Peter Greenhalge and trimmer Alastair Richardson sailed together on a 49er campaign for the Olympics. That was around 10 years ago, but even now, that familiarity is vital. We've got a nice little um, team on board. Um, there's a nice work ethic. Um, we've got the experience of Glenn as well. And the whole thing sort of coming together with our Extreme 40 team, which is NASA and Lee and myself, has been good. Yeah, I did a 49er campaign, Olympic campaign with Peter Green Alge. Uh, we did uh, seven years. I think we got ranked second in the world in the 49er. Uh, we, you know, had a pretty good time, good fun doing that up until uh, 2003. And then Pete's carried on with the Extreme 40. I mean, I did the Extreme 40 and then the America's Cup. And uh, now we've come back together again with the Oman Sail in the GC32. Uh, so it's good to be back together. Uh, it's obviously feels like old times a little bit and the fact that you know our communication is pretty good together because you know we, we just it's like like brothers effectively just getting back in the boat together teamwork is also evident on board spin drift racing Jan Guichard helms the boat alongside his brother Jack who's the trimmer also on board is Christophe Espagnon, who first started sailing with Jan over 20 years ago. Based in South Brittany, Spindrift Racing was founded in 2011 by Donna Bertorelli and Jan Guichard. A new addition to the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour this year is a team with a rich history in the sport. Alinghi was created by Ernesto Bertarelli and became the first team to win the America's Cup at the very first attempt. That was in 2003 and since losing the Cup in 2010, the Swiss team's focus has switched to other sailing campaigns. They've twice been crowned Extreme Sailing Series champions and this year marks their debut on the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour. The final
final two teams that completed the lineup at the very first event in Austria were Team NG from France, skippered by transatlantic sailor Seb Rhodes, and a second Swiss entry, Armin Strom, skippered by star class Olympian Flavio Marazzi. With the conditions in the open water of the Solent totally different from Lake Tronsey, the second stop on the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour could be a very different event from the first with foiling guaranteed. Team Spindrift Racing would miss cows, but it was announced just days before the event that in their absence there would be a new team from America. Team Argo 32. The crew had been training hard on their GC32 in Key West earlier this year and were keen to test their strength against the rest of the teams on the tour. Helming the new boat is Imelja's 32 world champion Jason Carroll. Most of the crew's experience is with that boat, but when they received their GC32 last October, they immediately broke the around Jamestown outright record. I think compared to Key West, uh, the competition level is definitely higher here. Um, there were two totally beginner teams, ourselves and another one in Key West, and two uh, more experienced teams there. Um, and here we have, we're the only beginner here, so uh, we have a lot to learn from the other teams around us, and we're looking forward to that. You know, obviously, at the first time when we started to, this project, we, we you know, the, the, the purpose is not only to make a boat, it's to create a new sailing experience. That was the the, 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 the top things uh, with a certain vision. Um, you know, having heard of the America's Cup already back in the days and and the hole in the market. You know, so it was a very well found in the vision of to, to do this boat. Uh, um, now, if I see you know three years later, we we have the best team coming on the boat, selling it and enjoying it. I think that's the the best. The best part, you know, if you see uh, all the sellers we had the past six months, uh, you know, international sellers been selling forever, got all the title, America's Cup or Volvo or whatever, and they enjoy themselves. Um, you know, I think that that's the the key uh, to sell those boats to and to to enjoy themselves. Uh, obviously, you know, we our purpose is to to have a lot of fun, and uh, so now we have pros and we have owners on the circuits and. Uh, we uh, try to find a, a good mix to, to make it work, and uh, I think in the coming years there will be more, you know, more things going on about this. Yeah, I think you know it's like in every industry. What you see nowadays is consumers actually want to get the same tools as the pros, and uh, you don't want to go low, lower. I mean, obviously everything has, is also related to prices, and that's something we've been very aware of since the beginning. We wanted to have a good product which was not, you know, only meant for professional teams with big budgets. Um, you know, we wanted to have a, a good product. So we, we when we designed this boat, there was a lot of thought, you know, coming from the F18, going back to the, the big boat, and not going from the big yacht to a smaller boat. And I think that's the key, having a boat which is not costing a fortune and having a lot of fun where everybody, you know, enjoy themselves. Welcome back to the second episode of the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour. And we're in Cowes in the Isle of Wight. The teams are preparing their missiles for this second stop for 2015. Professional crews are often campaigning other boats in different series, so training time is precious when they come together in the GC32s. You know, it's going to be pretty full on this year because um, each event are very closely tight, you know, knit together. Um, one, the GC is always just behind the Extreme Sailing Series, and um, you know, it's been quite a, a rush to get here and get ready. And you can see. Uh, Everyone's working on the boat now and it's race morning and we're trying to get everything ready. So um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure on us on that front, but um, once we're out there racing, we're going to really enjoy it. Well, that stretch of water out there, the Solent between the island and the mainland is one of the most challenging stretches of water in the world. It's renowned for its strong tidal currents, numerous sandbanks, and the sailors will have to be on guard because it's a busy shipping lane. However, in yacht racing history, it's significant, famous for where the first America's Cup was held back in 1851. Current is, is very strong here in the Solent, so it's, it's one of the parameters you have to uh, 
to uh, count uh, when you make a decision, a tactical decision, especially on the ley lines. It does, doesn't really matter if you foil or not, the current is still there and just pushing you uh, away from the mark uh, or, to, or to the marks. Conditions on the opening day's racing were very different to Austria. With the winds blowing from 10 to 15 knots, the boats had a chance to pop onto their foils and show their true potential. Consistent sailing from Malingi throughout the day saw them rewarded with the top spot on the leaderboard. Armin Strom sailing also had a strong day out on the water with two wins, which put them one point behind Alenghi. Making huge improvements after finishing last in Austria, they relished the breezy conditions out on the Solent. Yeah, we had a good start into the series with um, good racing. Fortunately, we had some better breeze than the whole week in Austria. And actually, I forgot after two o'clock when more breeze came, it was like 10 knots. That's uh, when, when we like it the best. I think it's the most fun when we can race the boat around in the foiling and with the foils up. And um, yeah, it's great, great fun to sail. The day closed with a fun race, pitting the GC32s up against the Kite Raceboard World Champion and Bullet Ambassador Steph Bridge and her son Guy. Their foiling boards made it some spectacle. In Austria, racing on the Bullet GC32 Tour was neck and neck with very little to choose between the teams. Again in Cows, for the first two days of racing, most teams shared the Bullets. However, struggling slightly with the other more experienced teams were debutants at Team Argo 32 from America. They're a skilled team in keelboats, having won two Melgers 32 world titles. For their GC32 campaign, they brought in two moth sailors who are familiar with foiling, but helmsman and skipper Jason Carroll would have liked more training time on the foiling cat. Our experience level is so-so in uh, catamaran sailing. We have done a lot together in a mono hull, um, but this is kind of our first experience with catamaran racing. The second day of racing belonged to tour leaders, Sultanate of Amman. Some superb tactical sailing from the crew saw them climb up the leaderboard to pole position ahead of the final day's racing. Their lead, however, was just one point, with Armin Strom pushing them right till the final race. A mistake from the Swiss team on the last beat handed the Amani team the race and the overall lead. Yeah, we, um, we had an interesting day. I think we just improved slowly throughout the day and um, just kept our call and uh, managed to jump on the opportunities when we could and we, we thought that with the wind shifting that far left on the on the last beat that there was an opportunity to deploy the spinnaker on the run and we did and we managed to hit them at the finish line. Overnight leaders Alinghi slipped down to fourth after the second day with the other three teams sharing the bullets. So Sultanate of Oman were going to have to work very hard on the final day's racing to fend off the challenge from Armin Strom, who were relishing the test of racing in the choppy Solent.
Match Racing World Champion Sebastian Cole was back with the team after missing the opening event and his tactical skills had brought the whole team up a level. It's still a young team. Uh, they, it's, there's a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm uh, in this team. But still a lot of things to learn, how to, to work together and how to adapt to this new style of boat. So it's uh, like a new generation of sailors coming up. And um, it's, it's great fun. I mean, we are learning every day. So the teams were preparing for the third and final day of inshore sailing with five races scheduled that would decide who would take home the inaugural Bullet Cows Cup. It was set to be an exciting day's racing with choppy sea conditions and a consistent strong breeze. Sailing on these boats in rougher waters is a challenge and boat position in the fleet can be key. The margins are so small between the boats, the crews are looking to get any possible advantage over the fleet, even before the race is underway. The races are so short, so you, if you have a bad start, you really don't have much time to um, repair the situation. And so uh, it, it's important to have a good start. Although starts are crucial, especially in lighter winds, in today's weather it was more about boat handling. With gusts reaching up to 20 knots bearing away, it was really demanding on the sailors. Full foiling conditions saw the boats reach maximum speeds, making mark roundings all the more challenging with crews pushing the boats as far as they dare. And savouring the challenges were Flavio Marazzi and his team on board Armin Strom. Scoring a bullet in the opening race, they seemed to be at home on these waters and they went on to win four out of the five races, sealing the overall victory with some outstanding sailing. With Sultanate of Oman assured for second, the fight for third place came right down to the final race. Alinghi managed to pip Team NG to the line and claim that final spot on the podium. Yeah, well, we have a few more days in such conditions. We sailed in Miami and Key West this winter and it's been 10, 15 knots. And I just practice a bit more than probably the other teams. And feel more confident to, to go with the kite and take a more risk. Well, what's different about cows than any of the other stops on the tour is that after three days of inshore racing, the boats will take part in the historic Round the Island race for one of these magnificent trophies. The race was first held back in 1931 and has since then become a British sporting institution. Last year, two GC32 took part in the race. One of them won line honours, so no pressure then on the five boats racing this year. This year, over 1,500 yachts were in cows to take part in the annual event. They ranged from multi-hull speed machines like the GC32s to your weekend cruisers who aim to just make it around the island before the tide turns against them. It's great because it's you know a lot of uh, history here. Um, you know it's very uh, a lot of traditional boats. Yet there's some um, some moderns in there and and some multi-hulls and some bigger boats and. You know, being a little 32-footer uh, is pretty scary when you're around some of the, you know, 100-foot, um, you know, big, big traditional sailing yachts, and, and they're going quite slow. So, um, you know, it'll be tricky, uh, tricky just getting clear of all the other boats. And uh, from there, you know, I think it'll be a fantastic race with the five boats in our class. 
Um, the one thing that's going to be uh, un, you know, hard to predict is how the rough the sea state will be out uh, at the south end of the island. So if it's rough, it could be uh, you know, whoever can slow the boat down enough not to capsize, and, uh, but push hard enough to be, to be fast. Competitors come from all over the UK, other parts of Europe and as far away as the USA to follow the 50 nautical mile course around the Isle of Wight. Starting on the famous Royal Yacht Squadron line in Cowes, the fleet races westbound to the Needles, around St Catherine's Point and Bembridge Ledge Boy and back into the Solent to the finish line in Cowes. Flat water conditions and consistent wind saw Ben Ainsley set the overall record two years ago in his AC45 Cat. He completed the course in an incredible two hours, 52 minutes. I mean, the only thing we have now, we have a west uh, wind uh, forecasted, so I think it's going to be hard to beat the record uh, because the, you know, the wind is not in the right direction. But aside of this, I think the, it's going to be pretty amazing. You know, uh, it's going to be a good race between five boats trying to get back on each other. So uh, yeah, that would be good, I think. Yeah. The GC32 fleet were on the second start and crossed the line to begin racing the slow upwind leg to the iconic Needles. Team NG were first around the famous White Rocks, followed by Alinghi. The rough seas on the south side of the island really tested the teams and put any record attempts out of the window. Sultanate of Oman, though, managed to overhaul the fleet and cross the line one minute ahead of Alinghi in three hours and 50 minutes. Team NG took third place with Team Argo 32 in fourth. Less than six minutes, though, separated the four boats. It was a very different race to the light winds of last year, where Paul Campbell James took line honours. Replacing the injured Lee McMillan on Sultanate of Oman this year, he enjoyed the speed and challenge of the race. Yeah, it was a very different race to last year. Last year we drifted round, barely foiled, and it took us nine hours. And this time it was, uh, especially on the back side of the island, was windy, wavy, really full on, and it took us half the time. So, um, yeah, it was, it was wicked fun today. And, you know, Ernesto and the Alinghi boys pushed us all the way. Closing ceremony saw the winners from the inshore races receive their prizes on the podium. It's been a successful event in Cowes. Wind, sun and lots of action. With two events completed and three remaining, the Bullet GC32 Racing Tour of 2015 is beginning to take shape. Well, that's it from the historic naval port of Cowes. We've seen some very different racing on the Solent to the first tour event back in Austria. I wonder what lies ahead because the GC32 bullet tour now moves to Germany and to Kiel at the end of July. We'll see you then.